Today we wanted to talk about using a bear put debit spread as a market hedge. Now we have covered this before in different presentations, different ways to hedge the portfolio using options on indexes, ETFs, just trading simple volatility shares, UVXY, or trading on VIX as well to help hedge a portfolio against an unexpected downturn. Okay, so those are some of the ones that we've covered, but let's get to Octavio's question. Octavio wanted to know, can you share your opinion on this trade? Portfolio protection is a cheap way to pick up some negative delta. Looking at a four-point strike debit spread, and what he means by that is four strikes apart uh, with five-point spreads on SPX, this would be 20 points. So his hedge, if daily SPX goes below the 10-day EMS, buy a SPX delta five put spread, 60 days out. So he means buy the, the long option of our bear put debit spread where we're going to buy a slightly at or in the money put option and sell a lower strike further out of the money or not as deep in the money put as well, which will profit to the downside as the market falls. He wants to go 60 days out on a 20 point spread, four strikes apart. But the long delta we're buying, he wants to be around 0.5. Now he has exit strategies. Exit one at 300% gain cost of the spread. Exit two, 25% stop loss of spread cost. Exit three, 30 days to expiration time stop. Well, it's great. And I'm very encouraged to see that Octavio has not only an idea of what to do here, but he has the exit plan, which is most important and very important uh, for any trading strategy, of course. Not even just using a hedge across the market, but an exit strategy, very important for any strategy you're trading in your portfolio. This is from a presentation I was working on this week that I didn't finish up. Trust the search results for 2021, something we do for our blueprint owners, radioactive traders every 10 months to a year or so. And it's also going to be incorporated to some of the other strategies we have available in Power Options. This is the last six months of what we've been seeing in the market. Uh, SPY, SPX, of course. We melt up to new highs, and then we see a little correction. Uh, then we melt up again, and then we see a little correction. And then a little dip down again, and then we melt up again, longer term, then a little correction, melt up, little correction. Uh, it's not Christmas, of course, but this is the current pattern we've been seeing over the last six months of trading. Now, let's take a look at one of those biggest declines we've seen in the last six months. This happened essentially from a peak of around February 5th, February 6th. And the dip happened on the 4th and the 5th of March, so about a month later. And we see on this chart around February 17th, we start to hit that 10-day EMA that Octavia was talking about. In those other webinars I just showed you a moment ago uh, on the YouTube channel, what Ernie and I generally tend to look at is as a market hedge, or the hedge I like to use for the bull put credit spread and calendar spread of my portfolio, those portions of my portfolio that are in leveraged trades, we might look to buy a 45 day out SPY put with a delta of 0.3. Or if the prices are good, which they haven't been, buying a VIX call with a 0.3 delta that's also 45, maybe 50 days out in time. And Octavia wants to know about this 0.5 delta bear put. Well, let's look at some of these comparisons that we would have had. Now, my first approach using the historical chain, we went back to February 17th, 2021, the day where SPY was nearing that EMA 10 that Octavia had mentioned, 10 day EMA, excuse me, that Octavia had mentioned. I'm going to look for that negative 0.3 put delta. And with SPY at 392.39, the 45 day out, the April 1st, 43 days out, 378 strike put with an ask of 574 is likely the position I would have chosen. The 379 would have been fine. The 377.50 would have been fine as well. But we're going to go right in the middle there with the 378 put. Now, an easier way to analyze these positions is using the historical tools and power options. I could have used the chain and gone day by day to see where the increase was from April, February 17th to April 1st. Rather, I'm gonna let the tools do the work for me. So we created a simple search looking for long puts that are between 42 and 48 days out in time with a delta between negative 0.32, negative 0.28, and we just screened against SPY. 
We ran the historical Smart History Excel with that search criteria on February 17th. And again, here are the four that would have matched that criteria. The reason why it's easier to do it for me in this way is once I have those results come up, I can look at each individual leg and click on Analyze Position from the historical search results. This gives me a breakdown of what happened to the position as a whole during that time period. So on 3-4, we see the max return for this put was 83.6%. We originally paid 574 for the put. At the market low, this here, the graph that is shown on there is my option bid price versus the underlying price. So on March 4th is when the bottom hit and the premium there was 1054. So we'd have a profit of 480 that we could pocket at that time period as a hedge or 83.6% in that case. Strange things happen later, don't they? Just a couple days later, it's back down to only $7. And a few days after that, it's right at our price that we paid. A day or two after that, it's below the price we paid and it goes to full loss towards expiration. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. So this is where we sort of stand right now. This is where we would have, what hedge we would have been able to see when we started to hit that 10-day EMA on February 17th and to the low point of the market on March 4th. Now, this is a breakdown that we want to look at and we want to talk about as well. From 217 to 39, remember our initial cost was 574 on the put. On March 4th, when the market hit the bottom there, the max return was 480 or 83.6%. On March 5th, a day later, the market sort of recovered. The price dropped from that 1050, where we could have sold to close it at 1050, 1054, to only 670. Still have about a dollar profit. On the 8th of March, we got a profit of about $1.20. Then on the 9th of March, put dropped to $5.26. We're at about a 50 cent loss on the position. And it never went back to profit. Of course, now the market's going up. So I'm not worried about this hedge so much on the bull put credit spread portion of my portfolio because the market's doing what I want in the other direction. Any of these hedges, and we'll see the other examples soon too, which aren't as impressive. Octavius is impressive. But the other ones that I would have used were not that impressive, and there's a reason why. But in this case, we would have looked to have closed half of the positions at max. How could I have told that the 4th of March was the max? And just, just a few days before that, we saw in the last graph, there's a spike around March 2nd where it almost hit the same value. But what I mean by that is that usually when I see a 75 to 80% profit, on my hedge is when I close half because the risk is that a few days later, you can have no gain on that position. If I did do this hedge at this particular time on February 17th going forward on March 4th, but let's say I bought six contracts of that SPY put at 575. So on March 4th, I likely would have closed three or four of those puts when I saw that 80% profit, 75% profit on the position. Then as it started to move back down, the next day when it went to 670, I probably would have sold the other two because I see the markets going against me. Yes, I would have missed out on the 693 on March 8th, but as it starts to reverse, I have to close the rest of the hedge because I'm giving back the profits that I paid for it. The hedge is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Any type of these hedges, as you can tell, when we saw the last six month chart of SPY, these dips are happening in three or four day time periods. You have to be Quick. You've got to be quick to close the hedges, whether you're using VIX calls or uh, calls on VXX, for example, UVXY or volatility hedge, puts on SPY, puts on QQQ or IWM. Once you have those targets, you've got to close a good portion of the position because it can evaporate quickly. And as we saw on that chart, dips were happening every, you know, when dips happen, they were just occurring two to three days. That fourth or fifth day, you've got to scramble to make sure you're out of it. Otherwise, you're going to give everything back if you haven't sold to close those yet. All right, let's move on now. Using the historical search again, this time in a long call search, just for VIX options. VIX calls counter market. So as the market goes down, the volatility should spike, and we should see a good return on our options. The search filters we used 
all expirations. I had to use a different time frame, 32 to 65 days, um, because the VIX at this time didn't offer a good 45 day out expiration. 0.3 delta, so we restricted the delta to be between 0.28 to 0.32. Um, and then, of course, the last search criteria we used is just to focus on the VIX itself. So it's a really simple search that we can do and create historically. And we ended up with three results, two for the 24th of March expiration and one out to April. But see how deep in the money or out of the money, excuse me, we're almost 50 percent out of the money. VIX was trading at 2150 on February 17th. That 63 day out April 42 and a half call is our delta of 0.3. One thing I really want you to notice here is look at the implied volatility values of the volatility options, the implied volatility, the volatility index options on February 17th, 2.10 or what you might call 210% for that March 3750, March 40. 224% implied volatility, 185 or 1.85 for that April 42 and a half. That is an extremely high implied volatility for these options. These are extremely high prices. Normally, in normal market conditions, when our VIX is down to, let's say, 13 or 14 or 15, remember those days back in 2017, early 2018 as well? Um, if I took a delta of 0.3, Premium's only about a dollar to buy them. Now, these look like they have a premium of a dollar, but look at this bid ask spread for this March one. 63 cent bid, 329 ask for a midpoint of 196. April's very reasonable. Bid ask spread wise, 225 to 235. Yeah, 230 is going to be a reasonable price to get filled on that position. But let's move on. If I went shorter term with the cheapest option, the 24 March. 37.50 call on the VIX. The high was actually eight days later on 225. That was that first spike that we saw. And at midpoint of 196, would have had a price of 219. So we've had a 23 cent profit or 11.5% only. I don't think I would have gotten that midpoint. I think a more reasonable price would have been the mid of the midpoint here where I would have paid 263 between 196, the midpoint, and 329, the ask. Lucky to get 263 if I bought that March 3750 VIX call on February 17th, is my guess, which means that I'd still be down 50 cents and never would have had a profit on that VIX call as a hedge. What about the April one? Shouldn't that have done better? That's further out in time, of course, and it's uh, wasn't as high of implied volatility to start, not as much. We know we probably would have got that mid price at 230. Oh, I'm sorry, folks. There we go. Probably would have gotten that midpoint at 230. That'd be reasonable, wouldn't it? 230, the 225 bid, 235 ask. But the price only went up to 238 on 225. It didn't reach as high as probably 220, 225 on March 4th. When the market hit that bottom, VIX, of course, reacts differently. Here would probably have been a good time to look at the VIX when the stock was down to 16 or 17 or 18. We had a webinar recently on that as well during this time frame. It was in April. There's a webinar there. Is now a good time to buy VIX calls? One of our attendees asked us that question. So this 63 day out VIX call on February 17th was not a good hedge at all. And in fact, the hedge hit sooner than the market bottom did just because of the way that volatility works. What I mean by the way that volatility works. This illustrates other concepts. What we just saw with the VIX calls and why they weren't good heads. The last eight months, really the last 18 months, we've talked about the risks of the volatility of the volatility index. The prices were too high to use VIX calls as a reasonable hedge. Now, yes, if we caught it in February of 2020, let's say February 10th or February 15th of 2020, we would have seen a great hedge in that case to March 25th, March 24th, right? That would have been great. But again, that's just now, since then, they've been way too expensive. When the VIX calls are too expensive, we look to VXX and UVXY 
shares to buy the underlying ETF since we can't buy shares of the VIX. Well, this wasn't that great either. VXX went from 1558 to 1627, only a gain of 4.4% from February 17th to March 4th. UVXY from 925 to 975, only a 5.4% gain in that case from February 17th to March 4th. He is to remember is that the volatility pricing is based on volatility futures, not what's happening right now. Meaning that on February 17th, there was forward-looking concern about the volatility and where the market might be volatile-wise, and that's why everything was so inflated. And of course, UVXX and UVXY, they didn't move that much because when we bought in February, on February 17th, even though something happened on March 4th, it was kind of already priced in because they're looking at the future's volatility going forward, not what's happening right now. This is why when the VIX calls are too expensive, when the VIX implied volatility, the options on the VIX implied volatility is too high, just focus on SPY, QQQ, or maybe IWM puts, or IWM bear put debit spreads, which is the point of our question. So now for Octavio. Here's what the search we created to look for 60 day out bear put debit spreads on SPX. We set our expiration time frame to be between 52 days and 70 days. We want the short option to be at or a little bit out of the money, the option that we're selling. We want the strike difference of 20 to match Octavia's needs. And the long option delta we're isolating to be between negative 0.6 and negative 0.49. Dealing with puts now, so we have to deal with the negative delta. And on February 17th, of course, SPX is at uh, 3931, 3931.33. The 0.5 long delta that came up was actually the 3940, 16th of April, 3940, about 10 points in the money. And we would have sold the 3920 against it. So a 20 point spread, and this would have been of net debit, 765. Of course, if it went below 3920 at expiration, we had the max return. It'd be 161.4% return on a 20 point spread, the debit of 1765. We see almost a $12.35 profit actually on a debit of 765. That's our 161% return max potential. But is that what necessarily happens? No. Let's go back. So we ran that search and we used the analysis there from the historical smart history Excel. Our 16th of April, 3920, 3940 was a debit of 765. On March 4th, the max return was 7450. Now, what do I mean by that? Octavio said he was looking for a profit, that one of the exits was to close when you're at 300% profit on the position. Well, by definition, we can't see more than 100% profit on a debit spread, but we didn't see a 300% profit on the long either. We paid 120 for that long 3940, 3,940 put. And at the peak, when SPX was at the bottom, this is the SPX here, the orange line, and these are our option prices, I believe. Or, yeah, <coughs> excuse me. So when the market fell, even though both puts were in the money at that time, we gained $84 on the put that we bought. Paid 120. It was priced at 204.10 at the bottom, which was about a 70% profit on the position. And to close the entire position, even though you only had a debit of 765, if I just closed the long and said, hey, I paid a debit of 765 or $765 for one contract of each for this one contract spread. I can close this now for 20,410. That's a huge profit. But now I'm left with a naked put on SPX with a margin requirement of 3,920 times 100 for one contract. You would have to close both in this situation. Otherwise, you'd have to put a massive amount of margin up to continue with just the naked put position. I can't say that at this point, when I was a cost basis of 765, even though this went up to 204 for my price of 120, 
but I've made 300%. There's only about a 70% profit. And I've still got to buy this one back that went up in price as well from 112 to 190, paying $80 more to buy to close this call, roughly, okay, $78 to buy that back. And I'm getting 84 here. So I'm still seeing a profit on my position. Closing out the legs, I'm still seeing a profit for my initial net debit of 74.5%. But again, with what Octavio said regarding those rules, I don't see this as the trigger being 300 because I have to consider the short put there as well. I don't want to leave the naked put open on SPX because then I have that really extremely high margin requirement on the position. This is a good hedge, don't get me wrong. This worked in this scenario. Not saying that at all. Uh, I'm just concerned that the stops that we were talking about, Octavia, with your 300% rule, I don't think you're going to see that. And I don't think you want to base it just on the long because I would never just sell to close the long in this debit spread I'm using as a hedge because if the market continued down, now that naked put portion of mine is going to be in trouble. Okay. And again, it did hedge well for what we were looking to accomplish. Let's compare all of them together. Really simple to look at a quick table here. The SPY 0.3 Delta put purchased on 517. It was a 378. I'm sorry, 217. It was the 378 strike. Put cost of 574. On March 4th, we probably would have closed half at around 1070 to give, I'm sorry, 10 um, what 1050, excuse me, for that 480 gain or 83.6%. But as we saw just a few days later, it was at a loss, as all of these were. And all the way to the end, whether we went to April with a 60-day SPX bear put, April with just the long call, the 45-day out SPY put or VIX call, we entered the full loss. All of them hit 100% loss and would have expired worthless. Again, that just illustrates the fact that we have got to be quick with these hedges. When you see that bounce, you've got to consider closing half of it, getting what you can. If it continues down, great. You still got some of it open. If it reverses against you, close out the rest before you start taking a loss in the position as the market recovers and goes back in the right direction. Because of the volatility, the implied volatility of the options and the volatility index, the VIX calls were not a great play at all. Max gain was about 10 cents or 3.3%. And that was on February 25th, not even on March 4th when the market hit the bottom. UVXY shares about the same, only a profit of 5.4%, not a great hedge. If the market took that 3 or 4%, 5% tumble, we didn't get much back. Octavio's bear put debit spread did work well. We entered the position for a debit of 765. On March 4th, to close both, uh, we would have paid about um, 8 or $9, but we sell the max gain of 569. We would have taken a profit of 569 off a of 765 debit, be 74.5% profit on the position. Now, if Octavio had just bought that April 3,940 put in that case, we saw the price was 120. Pretty expensive, not a debit of 765, which is a low cost hedge he's looking for, but Paid the 120 per one contract, not a dollar twenty. This would have been twelve hundred dollars. I'm sorry, twelve thousand dollars. But you would have had a profit of eighty four dollars when you closed it at twenty thousand four hundred. Uh, in that case, I'm sorry, yeah, eight hundred there, times the number of contracts. So the profit would have been seventy percent. Just that 0.5 delta loan call would have also been a reasonable hedge. This is why you can kind of see I prefer to use SPY puts. Your debit was 765 for that 20 point spread, Octavio, which would be great. That's a great low cost hedge. I like it. It did give you the hedge you wanted, reasonable expectation of a hedge as the market turned down. But for low cost, 0.3 delta, SPY put 574, $2 less than the debit, roughly. Similar gain, but percentage gains just a little bit higher in this case. This is why Ernie and I look for these after various testing. Is it good to buy a put at 0.5 delta, 0.4 delta, in the money 0.6 delta for a hedge? If you're expecting a reasonable decline, three, four, five percent in a short time frame, one week, two weeks, uh, maybe less, or maybe a seven percent decline over a four week period, we typically see that the at the money 
slightly out of the money, lower delta, reasonably low cost in comparison to everything else other than that VIX call, which didn't work. It's too far out of the money to get the delta we usually look for. The implied volatilities were too high. But that's a reasonable, low cost, workable hedge in the case of a market downturn. Yours is as well. Don't get me wrong. But Octavio, you brought to me the premise of you're looking for a low cost rather than buying a 0.5 SPX bear put, or I'm sorry, buying a 0.5 delta SPX put, which would have been really expensive. Just doing a 0.3 delta, 0.35 delta SPY put option, 35, 40, 45 days out in time, gives you a very similar low cost approach with a reasonable hedge expectation percentage wise if the market goes down as you expect. So I think it's reasonable. Octavia, to what you do, I just wanted to show you the comparison based on what we do. For all of you, this is a reasonable idea as well. Maybe an SPY, a lower cost SPY bear put would see a reasonable percentage return. But again, I don't know. The one thing that we always worry about with a debit spread as a hedge. I didn't really show a profit and loss chart of a debit spread. I meant to, but as I said, I ran out of time. Last minute, 4.29 and 38 seconds was when I finally finished up the slides here for this presentation before the webinar started at 4.30. Um, let me go back a couple of slides here. I want to go back here. So now what I didn't show, of course, for those of you is, is the profit and loss chart of a bear put debit. This would have been the 39.20 put. And this would have been the 39.40. So that's what we're looking at with a bear put debit approach. And then of course, the long put on SPY is this, it just keeps going. And that would have been my price there. We saw it at 378 was my strike, okay? So here's our 39.40, here's our 39.20. If SPX remained below both of them at expiration, of course, what happens? Well, we get the cash settlement of the amount in the money to 39.40, the put that we bought, and we have to pay the in the money cash difference from where SPX was to 39.20. So we do get 20 point difference there. That would have been our profit, our max profit we were thinking of that we saw 161%. We'd get 20 points back on the debit of 765. So we had a profit of 1235 on an investment of 765. Let me clear that up real quick. My concern, and I know there's another webinar we discussed this in, and I couldn't find it earlier today. I scanned through all those hedge webinars. I didn't find the exact one I was looking for. As we saw, this is a reasonable hedge. But if the market continues down below your expectations, it's a capped hedge. Now, hopefully, we don't see that. Hopefully, we wouldn't have seen SPX go down to um, 3,500. 3,400, 3,200, you know, that far down where the SPY long put would have been um, very beneficial for us to continue the hedge because it's not capped. Once we hit that max threshold, though, we can't make any more. And if the market continues down in price, yes, we did a good hedge. Yes, we got $12 off of a 7.65 investment. But if the market kept going down a few hundred more points, we weren't going to see any more. And Octavio's approach was a low cost way to hedge the market for an expected downturn. So you use a debit spread so you get something back. So you've got a low cost, 0.3 put delta, leave that continued growth open. You're not risking that much. And again, follow the rules. And just like your rule, Octavio, of you would think about closing this if it hit a loss of 25 or 30%, if the debit started to go down because the market was going up. Same thing here. If I hit a lot, if my if the market's going up, thankfully, my hedge isn't necessary, and I lose my value on my hedge starts to go down to 40, 45 percent of what I paid, I'll likely close it or maybe sell a put against it to create a bull put credit spread if SPY is still gradually melting up in that case and I haven't seen the correction I wanted. But I got to be careful with that sometimes because if it does drop down on you. Now you're looking at a loss instead of a gain with a long put in place and a short put sold above it. Give and take, right? That's what we know. All right. Well, that's all I have for you guys here um, related to the hedge of Octavia's question using a bear put debit on SPX with a 0.5 delta versus other concepts that we normally show. And I wanted to show the VIX there knowing it wouldn't work well just to emphasize the point that when the implied volatility of the VIX calls is too high, just stick with SPY, QQQ, 
or IWM for a low cost way to hedge the portfolio position. And you've seen some of the ideas there we have as well. Uh, Donna commented, SPY trades 24 hours per day to SPY options also trade 24 hours. There was an announcement that came out from um, OCC, the Options Clearing Council uh, last week or early this week. I forget what it was. I meant to copy and paste it uh, and share it with you all. They're extending the hours uh, for VIX calls, I believe as well, or VIX options, I should say as well, and SPY options. They're not going to be full 25, 24 hours, Don. They're going to have extended periods, but there's going to be a couple hours where it can't be traded. Um, I think they're going to open the trade. I think I saw from, I want to say from 7 p.m. Eastern time to maybe 2 a.m. or something like that. I'll get that information for you, Don, with what they sent out to us from the uh, OCC, the options clearing council in that case. 